President Biden is at times uh, appeared to be at odds with his national security team as the crisis unfolds back in Kabul. President claiming on Friday that al-Qaeda no longer had a presence there. Pentagon was forced to contradict that statement about 60 minutes later. Here is what Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said with Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday. And Mr. Secretary, the, the president, the, sir, the president Please. said Al Qaeda is gone. Simple question: Is Al Qaeda gone from Pakistan, uh, from Afghanistan? Al Qaeda's capacity uh, to do what it did on 9/11 to attack us, to attack our partners or allies uh, from Afghanistan, is vastly, vastly diminished. Is it gone? Are there are there Al Qaeda uh, members and uh, and remnants in Afghanistan? Yes. Mark Thiessen. With us now, Mark, good morning to you. May get interrupted. Let's see when the Pentagon briefing begins. Good morning, Bill. Here. He also said there are no troops in Syria, which there are. Also said there's, <laughs> been, there's been no criticism or, or backlash on behalf of our allies. And I, I mean, that's obviously the case. Boris Johnson, Tony Blair, et cetera. Where are we now, Mark? We're being governed by Chauncey Gardner. I mean, we, he, he, he literally is not aware of the, the facts on the ground in the worst foreign policy crisis in, our, in my lifetime. I mean, and, and Tony Blinken, obviously, the answer to, to, to Chris Wallace's question is, no, the president was wrong. But instead, what he tried to say is, well, there, there are al-Qaeda remnants in Afghanistan. Let me, let me tell you, first of all, there are more than al-Qaeda remnants in Afghanistan. But second of all, there were only ISIS remnants in Iraq when Joe Biden presided over the disastrous withdrawal of our forces in Iraq. According to uh, John Brennan, who was Obama's CIA director, al-Qaeda uh, al in Iraq, which became ISIS, had been decimated at the time of the withdrawal and had only 700 adherents left. And within very short order after U.S. troops pulled out, they built a caliphate the size of Great Britain. They started massacring Iraqis and they spread their murderous tentacles across the world. They carried out 142 attacks in 29 countries that killed 2,000 people. Remember the Charlie Hebdo attack, the Bataclan nightclub, the, the, blow, the explosions at the Brussels airport, the attack on the, on the Canadian parliament? They, there were terrorist attacks coming left, right and center out of, out of Iraq and Syria, out of the ISIS caliphate. We had to send U.S. troops back in to take down the caliphate. Uh, so I don't understand why he's thinking that Afghan that Al Qaeda remnants is not something that should be worried uh, worrying to us, even though there are a lot more than Al Qaeda remnants there. I'm gonna get your take as a speechwriter on something. So one thing that the administration has been doing through President Biden's statements, even the Secretary of Defense, um, Secretary of State, and the National Security Advisor, uh, they're using a lot of numbers, right? I, you watch these speeches, you listen to them, and it's just they're trying to kill you with numbers. There's this many people and this many people, and it feels like a checklist. And it feels like it's missing the point, but not, and it doesn't seem to match what we're hearing from people who are working to try to get American citizens and interpreters out of Afghanistan. What do you think about that as a, you know, kind of like a crutch to get through? Well, I, I think that providing numbers is, is useful, but if the numbers are, contra as you say, if it's contrary to what we're seeing on the ground, uh, that, then the numbers don't matter, just like the words don't matter. If the, if the word, you know, I, w I was in the Bush administration from 2004 to 2009, and during the worst parts of the Iraq war, no matter what the president said, uh, if we didn't turn around the battle on the ground, it didn't matter what he said. Our words only started having an effect on public opinion when he launched the surge and we turned around mm -hmm. the battle and, we, and we, were, we were winning on the ground. And so, you know, the numbers I'd like to see are how many a a Americans are there left right. uh, that you haven't uh, that you haven't collected yet? How many Afghans are there left uh, who are our allies that that we haven't collected yet? And when are, what is the, what is that number? Because here's my here's my fear. You know, the the deadline is coming up. The Taliban have said that there's going to be consequences if we overstay our deadline. And let's say we get all the Americans out who've reached out to the embassy, but there are still tens of thousands of Afghans who who risk their lives to protect American soldiers, are we just going to pull up and pull up our tents and go home because the Americans are out? Uh, that you know, there, there is a massive job to be done, and we've got to tell these. We got to tell the uh, the Taliban we are we we set the clock. You don't set the clock. We decide uh, when when the deadline is and when it is. So, so much of that we're feels to like do that, that, the so much of that feels is, like we just left. sorry. So much of that feels like we just allowed that moment to pass, Mark. Uh, so you got eight days on the calendar coming up on August 31st. Tony Blair, I mean, he just ripped this administration. Here's part of what he wrote, the former prime minister. The world is now uncertain of where the West stands because it's so obvious that the decision to withdraw from Afghanistan in this way was driven not by grand strategy, but by politics. 
We didn't need to do it. We chose to do it. We did it in obedience to an imbecilic political slogan about ending the forever wars. That's Tony Blair in London. Mark. Wow. La Labor prime minister who supported Joe Biden's candidacy said he was the right man for the right moment. Uh, you know, when Joe Biden says that, well, he hasn't heard anything from our allies about uh, loss of credibility. When's the last time you heard a foreign leader call America's policy imbecilic? Uh, you know, that 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 pretty much sums it up. And he's absolutely right about the politics, except the P Biden administration is even getting the politics wrong of this. Because, look, the, the reality is, yes, if you asked a man on the street, should we get out of Afghanistan after tw uh, after 20 years? Most people would say yes. But there were no marches on Washington demanding like the word at Vietnam, demanding that we pull out our troops. There was no groundswell of support or backlash for keeping our troops there. But I'll tell you what, if if Al Qaeda reconstitutes itself in, in Afghanistan and carries out, starts carrying out attacks on the West, there's going to be a backlash, all right, and the politics are going to be very bad for Joe Biden. I was thinking about this being, you know, an ideological struggle, a, a war for a generation, right? When we were attacked on 9-11, it yep. brought it all home. And so then America goes um, on offense. Um, it's like we're not going to sit back and just wait to be hit again. So that has happened, and a lot of progress has been made, certainly. Um, but it is possible, Mark, that we're going to start talking a lot more about radical Islamic terrorism again. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, that's really interesting. I would encourage everybody to go back and read the full Tony Blair uh, article that he posted on his website because it's really good. And that's one of the things he says. He calls it radical Islamic terrorism. He, he says that we are in a generational struggle with radical Islamic terrorism. You know, we talk, and when we talk about ending endless wars, radical Islam hasn't ended its war against us. They, they, the reason people take for granted the fact that we haven't been hit since 9-11, like the terrorists lost interest or something. No, it's because we've had our boot on their necks all over the world. We've been beating them down. Yeah. We haven't allowed them. We had a policy in the Bush administration that we give no sanctuary for terrorism anywhere in the world. We would disrupt any sanctuary that they tried to establish. Well, Joe Biden just handed them a sanctuary. He handed them back the sanctuary from which they planned mm -hmm. the attacks of September 11, 2001. You think that thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of jihadists aren't going to now suddenly travel like towards a magnet towards Afghanistan and that's not going to become you know we Donald Trump took away ISIS's caliphate and uh, and Joe Biden has handed the Islamic radicals an emirate in Afghanistan that they've been wanting and this is they're going to use that safe haven uh, to plan attacks and if you think 9-11 is the worst thing they can do to us I've got an, I got another thing coming for you they mm -hmm. consider that a floor not a ceiling oh. mm -hmm. Mark, thank you. Uh, you're right about being on offense and, and no longer. And listen, the border in the Southwest is wide open. Um, yep. The Taliban, the, the Al Qaeda is devious. I mean, who's to say that they're not already taking advantage of that? When a family from Ghana can walk across the border into Texas, sky's the limit here, Mark. Check out your piece in the Washington Post yeah. for our viewers if they want to check out your opinion piece there. Thank you. Mark Thiessen, stand by, waiting on the Pentagon. Thank you for your time today.